think I'd be reviewing my first way forward game that isn't Shantae related or even River City Girls related. Actually, it's something hella different. I usually find indie games that can pique my interest or leave me pleasantly surprised. Cat Girl Out Sally is pretty much in the middle, but does it still hold up to this day? Let's find out. Cat Girl Without Salad, a Moose Bouche, has quite the history, but not in a bad way. At first, I was a bit confused about the release date of the game. I was like, why does it have the 2016 date when it was released on April 1st, 2020 on Nintendo Switch? And after doing some research, I found the answers. What began as an April Fool's joke in 2013 soon became a reality three years later. Cat Without Salad was released on June 3rd of 2016 exclusively for Humble Bundle subscribers. However, on the exact day of the joke, April 1st of 2020, the game would be released on a Nintendo Switch, and on its 10th anniversary, it was re-released on PC to a new home. Now, that's quite the history, and given how many people like the design of the Neko protagonist, maybe they thought it would be a good idea to bank on the love of this joke. And if that's the case, then that was a smart move on their end. But what's also smart is pricing this adorable little game at 8 bucks. Indie games usually cost around 10 bucks in the eShop for me, yet Cat Girl Without Salad is 8 bucks. That's already a good price enough, but if you catch it on sale, you'll be getting 50% off like I did, which is a steal. So is Cat Girl Without Salad a good game? Let's find out. Cat Girl Without Salad doesn't particularly have a story per se. You just go through three stages and defeat their prospective bosses. However, each boss has some history with our feline protag. Gunner Crossbones is a rock star who used to be with Kabako as a rock star duo. However, fame really got to him to the point where he will lose the love of his life, and that led to him burning galaxies in the hopes of getting her attention so he could win her back. Yeah, when you're trying to win back the love of a bounty hunter, there's no winning her back, my guy. Not to mention, motherfucker, you're the one who left her behind for Celebrity Pussy, so why now do you want to win her back when you know she doesn't want you? Chefnaut was considered the best in the galaxies when it comes to cooking. He took Kabako under his wing to teach her the ins and outs of cooking, but that didn't go too well as Kabako left his cooking school and swept galaxies off their feet with her own cooking. And now the petty chef wants revenge. Sounds a bit cliche if you ask me, but apparently these two have connections with the final boss. And that's Aramiko, aka Cat Girl. Aramiko is considered Kabako's rival slash nemesis, though this is pretty much one-sided. She has a mega vendetta against Kabako due to her being under her shadow and for what she's done to her. Her and Gunner were together until Kabako came in, which led to Gunner dumping her for the ditzy Cat Girl. So then she decided to become one of Chef and our students and learned everything from him. However, Kabako once again came in unintentionally and made Chef Knock go insane, turning everyone against his recipes in favor of her own. See, personally, Oramiko is the only boss with a very good reason to be against Kabako. The poor girl was just minding her own business but ended up having her life ruined by Kabako. But regardless, she's still a criminal at the end of the day. Despite the story being simple, I think it's pretty good for a game that only lasts an hour. But I digress. Kabako is what you can describe as a ditzy and an airhead. I mean, how the hell do you create your own enemy by ruining her life unintentionally? And the fact that she doesn't even remember the bounties she had history with is insane. But when you put that aside, you'll notice that she's a cat girl version of Sailor Moon. Both characters just want to have fun and eat junk food. And they each have a companion that's a, that has to put up with their bullshit. Though unlike Luna, Squiddy's a bit freaky around a sleeping Kabako. It sounds like me! But I don't remember saying that. I don't think that's you, Kabako. Squiddy, have you been recording me in my sleep again? <laughs> now, I've never played much of shoot 'em ups in my life, but I have played some beat 'em ups like Scott Pilgrim, River City Girls, and Futarua Pudicure Max Heart. However, I'm happy to say that this, along with Hazelnut Hex, are amazing introductions to shoot 'em ups for me. You have three stages to go through. Radical Galaxy, RPG Galaxy, and Kawaii Galaxy. Each stage has you fending off against multiple enemies of many types. Then at the end of each stage, you defeat the prospective boss. As Kabako, you use a pea shooter to shoot down enemies while avoiding their attacks. Should you take too much damage, you'll encounter junk food which will help restore your health. Just try to avoid the salad though. The only way you'll take damage is through Kabako's bow tie. 
So if anything hits that bow tie, you'll lose a heart. And if you lose all of them, you'll have to retry, which will lower your score by 50,000 points. But what makes this 2D shooter unique is the power-ups. Power-ups are in form of six game cartridges. Each cartridge represents a genre of a game. Arcade Gun lets you shoot out many Pac-Mans to chomp your way through many enemies. A pretty good gun as you use the face buttons to move the chomping pack. Sports Gun is my favorite one of them all. It's where you shoot multiple golf balls at enemies doing mega damage. Pretty much referencing the golf games that were made in the olden days. RPG guns give you four options to use. You can attack with a sword, heal with yourself, use magic against the baddies, or you can run, which is impossible to do since you're stuck in a shoot 'em up game. But I like using this gun. It's pretty useful most of the time. Puzzle gun is nice. You shoot out colored bubbles that kind of reminds me of some of the old puzzle games. And as someone who loves puzzle games, I don't mind using this power up. Which reminds me, I should get to Puyo Puyo Tetris too soon. Dance Gun sucks ass. It's like Dance Dance Revolution, but I'd rather play Dance Dance Revolution. This in a shoot em up game is not it. They expect you to hit the arrows using the face buttons all while moving around trying to dodge attacks, which is impossible to do. And finally, we have the platformer gun. You shoot out a platformer and have them jump on an enemy's head. Pretty much like Super Mario or Alex Kidd, and it's very fun to use. Overall, these power ups are fun for the most part, and they do lots of damage, which I appreciate a lot. However, some of the fights can get pretty hectic. I mean, it's what I expected from a shoot em up game, but some of the enemies can get really annoying, especially in Kawaii Galaxy. The relishes can be so aggro, there's no predicting which direction to move when dodging the little fuckers. And a jellyfish also gave me a bit of trouble. Also, unless we're playing a 2D game with quick time events, dialogue should not be in the middle of combat or boss fights. There was no need to have them constantly for every stage. At the very least, give us a dialogue break from fighting enemies. As for the dialogue itself... I'm not picky. I'll eat at a D-rated restaurant. The D stands for delicious. Yuck. It's pretty comical. And good. I love the convos between Kabako and Squiddy. And that's complemented by the impressive voice acting, despite only have two voice actors. But hey, Christina V and Todd Habercorn did amazing as the characters. Christina as the voice of Kabako, Squiddy, and Iramiko, as well as Todd voicing Gunner and Shefnoff. So I think having two voice actors for five characters was actually not a bad move. Then let's fight fire with fire! Don't take off your shirt, Kabako. I mean, if she wants to, don't stop her, Squiddy. I'm not stopping her. Actually, can I ask without being labeled as a perv? Where the hell are her boobs in this game? Seriously, her design on the digital cover is a little different from in-game. Is it really that hard to be consistent with Kabako's design? Well, aside from that major hiccup, the rest of the game looks awesome for a 2D shooter. And the fact that the setting is out of space adds extra points to this game. As I said many times, I love space-themed stuff. And this game is no exception. And despite only having 8 music tracks to this game, this soundtrack is hella awesome. I haven't heard much of Jake Kaufman's work, but damn did he do a badass job at composing such a badass soundtrack. Kawaii Galaxy is hella kawaii, and I love what they did with Cat Girl. That shit was really good. But my favorite track is the title screen track. It's way too awesome to listen to. From the tempo to the basses to the synths and bells, just everything about it is perfect. It was perfect. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. Easily one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard. Mr. Kaufman, a job well done. Despite how fun and interesting this game is, if you know what you're doing, it'll only take you an hour to beat. If you don't, and this is your first time, it'll probably take at least two hours max. Kaka without salad, while not a very deep game, is still pretty fun to play. The controls are pretty simple, the gameplay is pretty fun, I like most of the power-ups, the story isn't bad, and while it can be a bit annoying sometimes with the enemies, the boss fights really made up for its fair challenge. But be sure Kabako doesn't freeze in the middle of a game, because I counted on a few times where Kabako couldn't move at all, and it wasn't my controller that was acting up, it was the game. And it caused me to either get the game over and restart the level, or just restart the game in general. Still, it shouldn't affect your playthrough of this game. That's just how, that's what, that was just my experience. Kakao without salad, it gets a 7.5 out of 10. Would I recommend this game? Well, if you're someone who likes shoot 'em ups, then go for it. It's only $8 in the eShop, so I don't think it's a bad price. 
but if you're still on the fence, then wait for the game to be on sale. I can only hope this game gets a sequel with more characters and more stages, and at the very least some cutscenes, but we'll have to wait and see. Thank you all for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for new videos I upload. On our way to 1K, we are only like a few subs away. I cannot wait till we get there, but I got new videos on the way soon, so don't worry. I got another Spark and Zero video in the works, and I also got a Fortnite tier list video on the way as well. Now, as for my next review, I'm finishing the Sonic Racing Trilogy once and for all. So, tuning at the end of September as we hit the road one last time in Team Sonic Racing. Until then, this is Star the Protagonist signing out. As always, go Kigenyo and have a star-tastic day, everyone. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to join the Star Nation. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, and while you're at it, check out my previous video. Now.